Business news from the Capital Region. This is Washington Business Report with ABC7 National Correspondent Rebecca Cooper. Welcome to this week's fresh look at business and finance in the Washington region. Today, what lessons the business community should learn from the McDonald verdict and tax tips for small business. Now is the time to cash in on advice that can save you time and most importantly, money. But first, our one on one interview this week is with a Washington native who's lived all over the world, excelled in some of the most challenging jobs, created successful startups, and yet decided this year to give up his own entrepreneurial passions to focus on his DC roots and help all Washington businesses succeed. Harry Wingo, former Navy SEAL, Skadden Arps attorney, Google exec, and cybersecurity CEO, now holds the title President and CEO of the D.C. Chamber of Commerce. We sat down this week to talk about ways Wingo now wants to give back and help grow the city where he was born. Harry Wingo, welcome to Washington Business Report. You're a humble guy because I've read the resume and you and I are the exact same age. We're both 48 years old, both graduated high school in 1984 and I was exhausted halfway through your resume. You have lived so many different lives already. You went to Naval Academy, you went to Yale Law School, you were a Navy SEAL, you were a corporate lawyer, you were a Capitol Hill staffer, you worked at the FCC. I don't even know where to start, so let's start with the Naval Academy. What took you to the Naval Academy? Um, well, my uh, father was uh, enlisted in, in the uh, Army and uh, he had a big influence on me and my mother was a school teacher as I mentioned but really I, I grew up with this um, I guess a, a strong tradition of uh, just feeling like I, I needed to contribute but some of my earliest memories uh, were uh, being in a taxi cab with my dad. My dad drove a taxi cab for extra money uh, to make ends meet. I was I was not poor. We uh, you know never went hungry but I was raised on thrift store clothes and I remember going to uh, you know thrift stores around the city and there was one that was big on uh, 14th Street across from where the bus depot is now and I actually was so um, you know, just worried that someone would find out that I had to thrift store clothes. So what led you to some of these other different adventures? Let's start with the Naval Academy. What made you want to go there? So again, just to serve, I wanted to be an astronaut, I wanted to be a Marine, and I found out about the SEALs when I was a plebe, or what we call freshman at the Naval Academy. So I uh, went to Annapolis and uh, I saw a picture of uh, some SEALs at one point. And I remember they had irregular uniforms on and I asked someone, what are those, hippie Marines? <laughs> and someone said, those are SEALs. And, I have to say, that, you know, as far as rising the leadership role, I mean, I, you know, I was just, uh, again, I feel so fortunate to have been, and I still am, you know, part of that family. What made you decide it was time to move on? It was a hard choice. I got the idea because my dad was a paralegal. He talked about the lawyers he worked with and uh, was so excited, you know, loved his job as a paralegal. And so I, when I went to law school, I had this image that I wanted to do uh, kind of deal work around telecom and really get into the business side and, and make a difference on uh, developing markets like Latin America and Africa. So then, okay, so fast forward to uh, FCC to Commerce Committee. I was in the general counsel's office at, at the time when broadband was being considered and the Brand X case of dressing out cable modem was classified. Just really exciting times. We did 25 hearings and we were trying to accelerate the deployment of, of broadband technology. And it was during that time uh, that I realized uh, there was, you know, as, as a lobbyist, there were so many things. I mean, uh, having a, 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 a law career, it's just so fulfilling. There's so many people in Washington, D.C. Uh, that are lawyers, and it's uh, just a great uh, career path, and opportunities are, are definitely here in the city. But I realized, wow, if you're a lobbyist, you know, again, back to maybe wanting a way to create things and, and get to an end goal, uh, as efficiently you know as possible perhaps and I realized wow if you're a lobbyist you can actually leapfrog uh, into what's next and then everyone else kind of works out the details and uh, just it's, it's it's messier than that a lot of times but I really it opened my eyes to the possibility of maybe trying lobbying and I did that was really exciting uh, to do that and it was early on at Google and uh, I spent five years there most of it as a federal lobbyist. Let's talk about the Google ethos because um, I find it fascinating. You know, Larry Page, Sergey Brin ties to University of Maryland, so it's a company that, that has a lot of fascination uh, 
in the DC area, um, but it's so Silicon Valley. And I have to say, I laughed at one of the uh, interviews you did um, with Fast Company Magazine. You were describing your first day at Google and how different it was from being uh, a Navy SEAL or in button up law firm. And you were trying to describe the ball pit that they have employees play in at Google. And you didn't even know the name for it. You were so out of your element. Did you feel like a duck out of water? I, I have to find that picture. It's one of my favorite pictures because uh, this has been a theme in my life too. I was given pause. I saw that. You know what I did? I took my tie off. I just jumped into the ball pit. So they didn't <laughs> push you. Was, you? No, jumped. I jumped in. I just was laughing and I thought this is hilarious. This is great. So here you are at the DC Chamber. You said you always like to go to the next place where you see growth. So that's a good sign for DC that you see this as a city with potential for growth in business, which not a lot of people always believe because of the various regulations, high cost of rent, high cost of wages. Um, you see potential for growth here. What are the metrics you're going to grade yourself by here? Absolutely, how businesses do. Uh, are we're in the business of business, and uh, my uh, mandate, my uh, honor, is to be able to work with the team and to try and make Washington, D.C. a better place to start a business, to grow a business, and to have the whole city uh, benefit from that. So the metrics uh, would be jobs. Uh, the metrics would be uh, how companies grow, the rate of growth. Uh, the metric would be attraction and retention of, of, of great companies. When you were first named as the, the new president, not everyone knew who you were, but it was easy to see from your resume why uh, the search committee wanted you. Why did you want this job? Now you're taking on other people's problems and you're taking on the very kinds of bureaucracies and regulations and things that your career has been about breaking down. So why would you take this on? Because it's a path that has heart. And by that I mean uh, I really do believe that we can make our great city even greater. The, the chamber started out 75 years ago. Uh, and at one point in the, our history, it was the Negro Chamber of Commerce. In 1956, it became more inclusive. Uh, but it's still you know, getting to that level to where we have companies uh, like Verizon, Pepco, Kaiser Permanente, uh, you know, um, Microsoft engaged. It's really in, in addition to you know, GW, the u universities. And so why would I take on other people's problems? When I heard about uh, this opportunity, I was actually contacted by a headhunter. And uh, uh, from what I understand, a, a city leader put my name into the hat. And I looked at it, and I talked with Elizabeth, my wife, and I, she's a, a judge in the city. And uh, we talked about it, and I said, she says, why would you do that? <laughs> you're, you're, you, know, you're, you, know, you, you love what you're doing. And I thought, you know, there is uh, the city, I, I think there's this sidestep that we could do. We could broaden the path by capturing uh, opportunities to go after technology. For DC to be uh, the East Coast hub for technology, as Mayor Gray has, has mentioned. But I, I saw that, and I also, part of the Navy part of me, you know, I hadn't had a crew, or you know, this is for me the leadership opportunity and to have a staff of people who are committed to the same thing. That also drew me in. And then what better chance to really just jump in and, and work with all the businesses uh, in the city, because I realize my how much I care about uh, east of the river, uh, where I would have grown up. In fact, I continue to go to church on Division Avenue all the way through high school. And uh, I, I saw this, the reason I took this job is just a chance uh, to, to do well, but also do good. Harry Wingo, thanks for joining us on thanks, Washington Rebecca. Business Report. Thank you. And when we return, our small business spotlight with important tips from an expert on saving money and time when it comes to managing your revenue. Stay with us.